everybody. Welcome Panthera TV Live. I'll give everyone a second to log on. Thank you all for joining us today for our third episode of Panthera TV Live, where we interview the most interesting people in wildcat conservation. If you haven't had a chance yet to check out our newest Field Notes blog, it, it covers the fires happening down in Brazil's Pantanal, where we have a ranch and where we do a lot of jaguar conservation. So head over to our social media channels or our website, and you can read that blog and learn how you can help to support efforts to fight those fires and protect the wildlife there. So... Welcome everyone, my name is Jamie Zachariah. I'm the Communications and Digital Content Manager here at Panthera, and I am going to be inviting in right now, Dr. Wong. Hi. Hey Jamie, how you doing? Great, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Thanks for uh, having me on Instagram Live. I can already see some familiar names popping up on the uh, in the comment section. So hello, everyone out there who knows me. Thank you for joining us. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, Ming is the director of our Small Cats program. Um, so Ming, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, hi, my name is Wai Ming. Everyone knows me as Ming. Um, and I'm the director of uh, Panthera Small Cat program. I've been with Panthera now for around seven years. Uh, I joined as the Tiger program manager, and then I became the Assistant Director of um, uh, Field Programs, and now I have the very fortunate position of um, directing the Small Cats Program. So the Small Cats Program is relatively new as far as Panthera's lifespan goes. Do you want to tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, it is, it is pretty new. I mean, um, historically, Panthera had focus on the big cats, the, the Panthera species, as well as pumas and cheeses. Um, and we had uh, a grant program called the Small Cat Action Fund that uh, gave out very small grants to, uh, to small cat projects. And that was our um, kind of footprint for, for small cat conservation work. But then in at the end of uh, 2019, we officially launched the uh, Panthera Small Cat Program that is dedicated to the conservation of the world's 33 small cat species. Um, you know, I think compared to the big cats, very little is known about the small cats and they've been somewhat neglected in, in the conservation world. Um, and so very little is known about their basic ecology, you know, their mm. population numbers, trends, habitat requirements, and distribution. Um, so kind of really the main theme of the program is to uh, really put that conservation spotlight on the species um, and we envision thriving populations of small cat species um, and their natural habitats across the world. And so, you know, with that in mind, we, our goals are to kind of accurately assess the conservation status of, of every single small cat species out there and develop targeted uh, conservation action plans um, and protect and recover the threatened um, small cat species that are, that are out there. Um, our programs is currently small. Um, we have a conservation biologist called Roshan Guharajan, who's currently based out in Borneo, protecting the small cats out there. Um, it's an island that doesn't have any big cats, so the small cats are the apex predators out there, and it's very important to kind of protect them. They're under a lot of threat out there from agricultural development and hunting, and so Roshan is out there um, developing law enforcement teams and biological monitoring to ensure that they are well protected. Um, we also have a data scientist who's currently based in, in France. Her name is Jolene Broadfield, and she is tasked with the Herculean task of producing um, a small cat, a global small cat database that will allow us to conduct uh, various range of analyses on our species that will shed light on some of their kind of basic ecological aspects. 
Um, and then there's myself, who, who leads the direction of the conservation strategies for the species. So there are currently three of us at the moment, but with, with hopes to expand. Great. Yeah. I mean, with 33 species, it's certainly going to be hard to, you know, study all of them at once. But can you tell us about the current projects we have going on and which species we're studying? Yeah, as you said, you know, 33, that's a, that's, a, that's a big number for, for a group of species. So, um, so we're currently looking at quite a few at the moment. Um, the way how the small cap program works is that, you know, we work in partnership with organizations and institutions. We have formed very strong collaborations with uh, Panthera's existing big cap programs. Um, and we also have the grant, the grant program, the small collection fund that I, that, that I spoke about. So mm -hmm. collectively with these approaches, we are, you know, focusing on quite a, quite a large number of, of uh, small cats. Um, but I would say that we're currently having a significant impact on about 17 species. Um, around. Yeah, it's a lot. It's, 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 uh, it's, a, it's a lot of work, but it's, it's a lot of fun and it's, great to kind of work in collaboration with all these people. Um, but yeah, around about 17 species across the globe, you know, from clouded leopards and flat-headed cats in Borneo, all the way down to the southernmost point in, in, South, Af in South America in Patagonia, looking at Joffrey's cat and, and Pappas cat. Um, so we have quite the, quite the species and geographic range that we're working on at the moment. And you mentioned that you work with the big cat scientists and the big cat programs that Panthera has and that other organizations have. But, um, you know, obviously small cats and big cats don't live isolated from one another. So how does your work overlap with that of the big cat work? Yeah, I mean, so many of the big cats and the small cats overlap in range and distribution. So it's, uh, it's a natural and logical move to form these, these strong collaborations uh, with, with, the, with Panthera's big cat work. You know, camera traps are one of the main tools for conservation. Um, and to date, uh, Panthera's big cat programs have deployed over, I can't remember the exact number off the top of my head, um, but around 20,000 camera traps uh, across, I think, 170 sites over 38 different countries. Mm -hmm. So throughout these surveys, we have amassed a huge amount of data. And, you know, for the most part, we've just used the big cat um, uh, images for analyses. Um, so kind of one of, um, one of Jolene's, uh, our data scientists main responsibilities is to kind of work with those camera trap data sets and extract all the small cat um, data that, that is out there to, to form this, to form this um, global uh, small cat database. So we collaborate on kind of um, historical and current camera trap surveys. But we're also collaborating directly with the Big Cat program. So, for example, we've just started a few collaborations with Panthera's Puma program um, mm -hmm. in March, just before all of this crazy COVID-19 lockdown business happened. Uh, myself and Mark Elbrock, who I believe did uh, an Instagram live recently, yep. we were out in Patagonia um, setting camera traps for Pumas and Joffrey's cat. Um, and we've now just uh, embarked on a new collaboration in, um, in the U.S., in the um, Olympic Peninsula, looking at pumas and bobcats. Um, but the small cat program also collaborates with tigers across Southeast Asia. You know, where you find tigers, you generally find clown leopards and the other sympatric uh, small cat species. Um, leopards and servals in South Africa, both for surveys and for um, uh, law enforcement aspects. Um, one of Panthera's kind of flagship programs or projects is the, is the Leopard First for Life, um, where a lot of leopard skins are used for ceremonial purposes. But we also found that a lot of serval skins now have, have kind of entered that, that circle. So we're uh, working very closely with the Leopard program to understand the impacts of, um, of uh, the use of, of serval skins in these kind of ceremonial um, um, uh, celebrations. <clears throat> And, um, you know, Jaguar program, collaborating with them with ocelots mm -hmm. and margays, as well as snow leopards in Central Asia for Palace's cat and, and lynx. So, you know, we're, we're very, working very hard and kind of still pushing forward with these collaborations with, uh, with the big cat programs. Um, but, you know, all of these collaborations really allows us to answer a number of really exciting scientific questions, you know, one of which in particular is, 
is how do the big cats and the small cats interact with each other? You know, we know that in some areas in India, tigers can displace leopards. And so you find that the tigers are in the core areas and the leopards in the marginal areas. Um, but we also want to see how that affects with, with small cats as well. How do, how do small cats interact with each other and how do big cats and small cats interact with each other? That's really interesting. I think it's not something we think of because conservation isn't, it's not, you're not just focusing on one species, right? Because they all live in ecosystems. So protecting a species and studying a species includes its habitat and all the other wildlife that live in it. Yes, yeah, so. exactly. And, and I think now that we have the small cat program on board, we're, we're trying to move towards a more multi-species approach. You know, we really want to address the conservation issues for all the cat species that live in a particular landscape. Um, but again, you know, going back to the species interactions, uh, while the small cats and big cats may have the same distributions at the site level, it might be a little bit different mm -hmm. um, you know, at that fine scale level. So we really want to kind of investigate that a little bit further. Okay, so we have all these projects, but is there anything coming up in the future that you're particularly excited about? Uh, we, we have we have a lot on the horizon. Um, a lot. You know, yeah, uh, a lot a lot of projects, which is really exciting. Um, you know, um, because so little is known about small cats, um, but the conservation interest is definitely increasing, which is which is really uh, positive to see. Um, so we're developing a long list of, of projects through various collaborations. Um, but we do have a number of exciting projects that are, that are just on the horizon. You know, we've just signed on a new project um, uh, studying ocelots in the Pantanal. Um, that will be kind of based out of Panthera's uh, ranch there, uh, where they've done a huge amount of jaguar work. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mentioned before about the Joffrey's cat and the bobcat work in collaboration with the Pumas. Um, that's, mm -hmm. that's just started and um, we're starting to, to collect some camera trap data, which is really interesting to, to see. Um, and, you know, going back to the goals of the small cat program, you know, kind of doing conservation assessments for all the small cat species, we are currently embarking on a number of range-wide um, distribution surveys for small cats, including uh, the flat-headed cat um, and the African golden cat. So these kind of range-wide assessments really do encompass a lot of collaborations, not with just kind of big cat organizations, but anyone out there who's doing camera trapping, um, collecting data. So it could be some primate organizations, for example, involved with uh, African golden cats. So it's really interesting to see these different players, these different stakeholders coming together to, to serve a common, common purpose. That's great. Yeah. And um, I see some people asking what's the best way to find out more about the work we're doing. And the answer is to follow us on social media. We post very frequently about the work that we're doing, blogs, videos, social media posts, um, and you can go to our bio and sign up for our e-news and other emails to stay up to date on all the things that we're doing um, in the future. So that is the easy answer to that one. <laughs> um, but just changing gears a little bit, why do you think that small cats get overlooked so often? I mean, I think until now, um, wildcat research has largely been driven by, uh, wild, wildcat research and conservation efforts has been largely driven by uh, body size. So, you know, the, the larger species get the bulk of attention. Um, and a colleague of mine, uh, the, the world's most renowned um, kind of small cat expert, Dr. Jim Sanderson, he made a calculation, um, you know, between the years 2007 and 2013, small cats receive less than 1% of the available funding for wildcat research. So, you know, big cat projects out there are getting grants in the, in the range of 100,000, um, even up to a million over, over a number mm -hmm. of years, whereas small cat projects are getting 5,000 to 10,000. Um, and even with that small amount, it's still having quite a big, big impact because um, a lot of the, the small cat researchers out there are kind of the younger generation, early career, and they're a little bit more mm -hmm. resourceful with their, with their funds and able to kind of uh, stretch it out a little bit more, which is really great to see. Um, but in addition to that, you know, small cats, they're, they're elusive. They're, you know, some are nocturnal, some are highly arboreal. And all are rare and secretive. And they are incredibly difficult to study in the wild. Um, you know, small cats are, are very fast, low to the ground, and they're often missed by, by camera traps. Okay. Uh, so that results in not enough detections in surveys, which means that we are unable to conduct meaningful analysis. 
Um, but I think, you know, in, in recent years, the small cat conservation has definitely gained a lot more attention. And, and we're starting to learn that many of the small cats are just as charismatic as the big ones. Um, you know, I, I personally think they're, they're super cool. You know, for example, uh, the palace cat that's notoriously known as the grumpy cat. Um, yep. you know, everyone, loves, everyone loves the palace cat. Um, but the palace cat has very specialized habitats and diets and so requires mm -hmm. its own set of unique and specialized and targeted um, conservation efforts. Um, you know, the black-footed cat, for example, was well known as, as, as one of the deadliest cats out there. Despite its size, it's Africa's smallest cat, but it has the highest hunting success rate of 60%. Um, and that's really cool. That's really, cra that's really crazy. A cat there that's the, a little bit smaller than a house cat is out there just, you know, really is a killing machine. Um, and that's, that's really quite cool to know. Um, we have... Uh, you know, cloud leopards, marble cats, margays, who are incredibly arboreal. They have these adaptations to their wrists that allow them to kind of run headfirst down, down tree trunks or, you know, kind of hold themselves upside down on branches. So they have these incredible uh, acrobatic skills in the canopy that just make them, make them so, uh, so fascinating. And so I guess the more we learn about them, the more we see a uh, great need for their, for their conservation. And these little nuances, I think, certainly help with, uh, with promoting their, their conservation needs. Yeah, and that's one of the main, also one of the goals of the Small Cats program is to bring attention to these species that most people maybe don't, don't know about. Um, I saw someone mentioned carousels. I always say that incorrectly, caracal. Caracals, yeah. Yeah. Yes, they are also one of our favorites. I like their pointy ears. Um, there are 33 species, so we could sit here and list them all. But yeah. um, I just want to do a quick shout out because I think that that yeah. comment came from the Urban Caracal Project too. We have lent some support. So thank you very much, Lauren, for that, uh, for that comment. <laughs> yes, our partnerships around the world are like what makes our research possible. That and some very highly dedicated donors, especially donors to the Small Cats program. So thank you to them as well. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm smiling because I'm reading some of the comments here and a lot of our partners are on here um, asking for shout outs. So definitely, you know, one of the, I mean, going back to one of the earlier questions, some of the, the public asked about how do we learn more about um, Panthera's kind of small cat work. Mm -hmm. A lot of our stuff is in partnerships. And so we work in collaboration with many, many great projects. Uh, one of them, which is the kind of the urban character project mm -hmm. um, based in South Africa. And the other one is the urban fishing cat in uh, Sri Lanka and Colombo. So uh, these, these projects go visit their websites. I mean, we, we're all partners. We, we, we all support each other. So go check out these other projects They're They're doing real, really fantastic work. Absolutely. Um, because like you said, sometimes it takes some more focused goals for these small cats. Yeah, absolutely. So you said they're very elusive. Um, what, have you been lucky enough to see any of these in the wild? No, I mean, I'm, I'm quite unlucky with, with my wildlife sightings. <laughs> that, that might be a bit of a running joke in Panthera. Um, <laughs> so I, I mean, most of my career, uh, so, my, my background is with big cats and kind of large, large mammals, particularly in Southeast Asia. Um, and I spent the majority of my PhD in kind of the past decade uh, working in kind of these really big forests in Sumatra. They're very, very dense, um, very hard to see animals. I mean, these forests are loud, they're very much alive, and I see a lot of fresh sign, but unfortunately I didn't get to see uh, much wildlife out there. Mm -hmm. um, so... Um, you know, I've been I've been very fortunate to see to have seen the marble cats and jungle cats, um, but you know, uh, my career with with small cats is still pretty early. And hopefully, when travel picks up a little bit, then you know I'll get to go out to to more places and hopefully spend more significant time in the field, particularly with these with these um, conservationists. And hopefully, they can show me around and 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 I can get more more uh, cats on my list. Um, but uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm looking forward to seeing him. But that's one thing that I'm very thankful about small cats. You know, before mm -hmm. kind of my, my background being in tigers, spent all my time in the field in Southeast Asia. But now um, with selling small cats, I get to kind of uh, travel across the globe, meet new cultures, new people, new habitats, and hopefully with that, more cats. So that, that would be good. Yeah, and I think that's one thing that we like to stress to people because, um, some people think 
And then with some cats, it's true that we're out, scientists are just out there just interacting with them all day. And, and yes, if you study lions, you're probably lucky enough to see them daily. Okay, yeah. But most of our scientists don't actually see the animals that they study, at least not commonly. Mm. Um, so I think that's just another point that shows the dedication that you and other people have to studying these animals that you might never actually get to see. Yeah, and that's why I love camera traps. Camera trapping is it's probably one of, one of my main expertise and, you know, field work is so incredibly difficult when you're out in the jungle, you know, trekking or out in these very kind of remote rugged areas. So it's, it's a lot of hard work um, placing these cameras. And so when you end up collecting data and you see that, you know, these cats and other carnivores and other animals have stepped on the same trails you have setting up that camera trap, it's, it's definitely rewarding. So seeing these images coming through camera traps is, is definitely really great. So um, if you have to pick, What's your favorite? Uh, I mean, that's a difficult question, you know, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it's changing. It constantly changes. Like I said, where every time I, I travel to a different place, you know, that, that, that cat becomes my favorite. You know, like I said, I've just returned from, in March anyway, returned from Patagonia, and I was all about the Joffrey's cat. I was doing all this reading with it, you know, and it is a beautiful cat. Um, but I would have to say, you know, the cloud of leopard is definitely, the cinder cloud of leopard is definitely mm -hmm. one, of my, one of my favorites. It's, it's one that's so elusive and beautiful and everything about it is very interesting you know it's most people class it as a small cat whereas it's actually a medium-sized cat um it you know it's, it lies within the pantherine lineage so it, it's, it's this perfect crossover between the small cats and the big cats um but it's just uh it's just a beautiful cat that lives in an area that is unfortunately under high levels of uh mm -hmm. of threat I haven't had the, the fortune to, to see one in the wild yet, but our study sites in Borneo, um, in Sabah, there's two sites called Doramakot and Tankulap uh, Forest Reserves. Um, I see one of uh, a colleague of mine is, is commenting here. He, used to, he doesn't work out there. It's one of the best places to see cloud leopards and marble cats and some other cats out there. Um, so hopefully I'll have the chance to go back up there sometime soon and, uh, and see them for myself. And um, for those of you who have been fans of Pantheras for over a year, you might remember, la not this March, but the, the March before we did March Madness, our own version called March Katniss, where we had everyone vote on their favorite small cat species, and Clouded Leopard was the winner. Um, oh, Palace right. Cat came in second. I see some comments for Palace Cat. I know Chrissy um, in particular is like Team Palace Cat, but there's just definitely something beautiful and mysterious about clouded leopards and I think their their genetic lineage is fascinating because they like are a small cat but they have kind of their own little niche and yeah yeah they have this kind of pantherine head this very well developed head um these beautiful long tails you know um and every time we get them on camera traps they always have their mouth open you can see their canines you know uh the clouded leopard has the the longest canines um um Kind of, kind of in skull ratio for all cats so it's this beautiful beautiful thing that you see so they're they're really fa fascinating and they're just very cool cats um oh we're seeing another shout out for jaguar jaguar undies <laughs> yep um and be on the lookout because there is going to be a video next week about one of our scientists barbara and some studies she's doing on jaguar undies so for those of you who mentioned that mental note <laughs> um just to take down the tone a little bit, unfortunately, because we are a conservation organization, um, you know, things aren't always great and they're not necessarily great for cats. So what are the particular challenges facing small cat conservation? Yeah, I mean, so the main challenge is that there, there are 33 of them and, and many of them require their own set of targeted conservation actions. Um, and so... You know, but yet, kind of due to their size, they're often kind of rolled under the, the larger umbrella species. And if we take care of, you know, tigers or lions, then everything else is, is taken care of. And, and in many cases, that's true. But there are, there are a number of small cats that, that really require their own kind of set of, of conservation action. Um, and so that's one of the challenges is to be able to implement that, that targeted approach. Um, you know, small cats are also incredibly difficult to study in the wild, as mentioned before. You know, camera trapping may not be the best um, method to, to study them. So, um, you know, even though some species, some of the small cat species may be more abundant than the big cat species, it's just, you know, the, the detection rates on the camera traps are just too low to, to do any kind of 
um, an important or meaningful analysis to kind of really accurately or precisely determine their population numbers or population trends or habitat requirements and things like that. Um, so, you know, as an example, you know, I've been working in Sumatra for, for over a decade you know, on, on tiger projects, and we have thousands of images of, of Sumatra tigers. Okay. You know, they're critically endangered. They're one of the world's most um, endangered cat species, but yet we have far more detections of tigers than we do of cloud leopards and marble cats, for example. I mean, there are other factors, of course, cloud leopards and marble cats are a lot more arboreal and things like that, but, yeah. um, you know, they, they're just inherently difficult to study in the wild. So, you know, with Panthera Small Cat Program, one of the things that we're trying to address is what is the best way to study them in, in the wild? Um, and so we're kind of really experimenting, you know, overlaying different methods with camera traps, telemetry, genetics, um, any way we can increase those detections to be able to, um, to, to create enough robust data to be able to perform, perform those analyses. Um, and I guess the other thing is fun funding. You know, I mentioned Jim, you know, made that calculation that less than 1% of wildcat funding goes to small cats. I mean, that's a huge challenge. Um, you know, the, in order to run a successful monitoring project or telemetry, you know, the, these project budgets are in the, um, you know, hundreds, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And yet there's only, you know, 10,000, 5,000 here and there available. Then there are not many other organizations that can donate to small cat conservation. But this is changing. Thankfully, this is changing. You know, having Panthera started this small cat action, uh, small cat program, we're able to leverage on Panthera's existing, um, you know, funders and able to kind of really, you know, to, to fulfill the theme and vision of our program and to, to put the spotlight on these, on these creatures, on these small cats. And hopefully with that, um, then more funding will, will come. Um, so it is challenging at the moment, but I do see a change in the future that, that things will become a little bit easier as, as the interest picks up and the capacity also increases to, uh, to study and conserve small cats. Yeah. And I think that, you know, we need to remind people that small cats face the same threats that big cats do, habitat loss, um, poaching for parts, conflict with humans. I'm sure you could name even more. Absolutely, but yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. These threats are just as important to mitigate as they are for lions or tigers. Yeah, but then with, with small cats, you have hybridization. You know, um, a lot of the wildcat species are getting hybridized with, with the domestic species. Um, there's a lot of prey loss in some, in some areas. You know, again, yeah. going back to palace cat that has specialized um, habitats and diets. So a lot of the habitat, their diet is kind of the, the rodents, the peakers and things like that, that are considered pests for, for agriculturalists. So a lot of them are getting poisoned and uh, kind of reducing the prey availability for those cats. Um, disease is, is another aspect that, that's um, been really been touched on at the moment that's also kind of affecting some of the small cat populations. So uh, yeah, you know, with, with the three main threats of habitat loss, poaching and, and, and human wildlife conflict, there are you know, a whole lot of other medium sized threats that are, that are creeping in um, that, that, you know, that need to be addressed as well. Yeah, definitely. And I think one that we get asked a lot about is the pet trade, which is definitely yeah. a nuanced topic, but it's something that is especially difficult for small cat species. Yeah, I mean, because they're so cute, you know, everyone, everyone loves a cute cat. Um, you know, a while ago, BBC li uh, released um, uh, a documentary series. They, they, I think they called it Big Cats, but they did focus on a number of small cats. Black-footed cat um, being one of them, I think rusty spotted cat as well. Mm -hmm. And when this came out, I think Panthera was flooded with requests about, you know, how do we get one of these as, as a pet? <laughs> and it's like, well, you're kind of missing the point. But um, yeah, unfortunately, the the small cat cuteness is also uh, can also be regarded as a threat because everyone wants them as a as a pet or yeah. or, hy or hybrid forms, you know, like the savannah cat or the or the Bengal cat, for example. Um, yeah, so there, there, are, there are a number of these emerging threats that are, that are coming up. Yeah. Um, so, you know, to kind of wrap this up, what's the one thing that you think is, you want people to know to take away from this or to know about small cats? Um, you know, well, aside from the obvious that uh, small cats are super cool and cute, um, <laughs> you know, they, they, they urgently require um, conservation attention. Um, you know, they, they play... Uh, as as meso predators, they play critical roles in the ecosystem. You know, um, 
managing the kind of rodent populations and all that sort of stuff. So they have a very important role in ecosystems. But, you know, because we haven't studied them in detail that enough, we, we still don't know what that is in many cases. And so it's really important to understand what, what role that they play. And, you know, kind of given the current kind of biodiversity crisis that we're going through right now, it's really important to kind of maintain ecosystem balance. Um, so not just the top predators, but also mm -hmm. for the, all the predators underneath. Um, but... Um, yeah, I mean, the small cats, uh, they're, just, they're just fascinating. They're charismatic, just even more so than the big cats. But they're very, very threatened, um, very vulnerable to extinction. And so they need all the, all the conservation attention that they, that they can get. Um, so hopefully with you know, Panther's small cat program and this Insta Live, that we are kind of promoting their conservation and hopefully kind of increase that uh, attention that they deserve. Great. So now you have to name every single species. Go. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I can't about that. <laughs> um, so thank you so much for joining us. Um, everyone, thank you for watching. This video will be up on our YouTube channel as well as our social media channel. So you can rewatch and share with all of your friends to remind them the importance of saving small cats. And if you're not signed up for our newsletter, um, please go to the link in our bio and sign up. And um, we look forward to bringing you more content about small cats, big cats, and everything in between. So thank you for joining yeah. us. Thank you very much for having me. See you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye.